Well done. Boom, 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 boom. See, boom, you just boom. can't see it super great. Okay, have a seat. <clears throat> okay. Is Elantris a top three or four Brandon Sanderson book, yes or no? Does Elantris deserve a sequel? Should Elantris be called the zombies of Elantris? Erlon? I don't know. The zombies of Erlon? <laughs> you know, there are worse things to try and call books. Should this have been named Spirit of Elantris? Maybe. Ooh. We'll find out. Did you know that was a working title? Spirit of Elantris. That's so good. Elantris. Well, I just we just finished the what? The novella, the novella uh, called Hope, Hope of Elantris. Elantris. It was great. Mm. Apparently, adding anything with Elantris will make a good thing because Elantris is a fantastic book. Two thumbs up. But it is not a top three Brandon Sanderson book. So the reason I asked this question is because last weekish, sure. when a few of our friends found out we were reading it, he's read it before. We just barely read it together. It was my first time. Someone was like, oh my gosh, that's such a good book. Definitely a top three Brandon Sanderson book. And both of us were like, top three for it. So now yeah. we need to have this discussion. So pretty easy. All right, I'm just going to start off. This is not as good as Way of Kings. This is not as good as Word of Radiance. This is not as good as Mistborn. So it, it pretty easily falls outside of the top three. Yeah, but for me, I think it's number four. Wow. Wow. Okay. So... Uh, context here though you haven't read the remainder of stormlight nope right so it could be better um or it could Oathbringer. be better or worse than oathbringer or um rhythm, rhythm of, of war. war um you also are not a fan of alloy of law i'll get back on that one yep um and you did not do any of the sequels alloy of law although frankly i will say elantris is better than bands of mourning okay. or shadows of self okay um the elantris is better than those and then do you think all three mistborn are better than this I don't know. It's hard because the stakes of those books are higher. Yeah. Um, and you, you've you invested in those characters a little bit longer. Um, and those are just phenomenal books. So I would say they're kind of on the same tier for me if I were ranking them. Okay. I do think, though, Alloy of Law is a better book than Elantris. Wow. Um, I think Alloy of Law is the best in the Mistborn um, uh, quartet uh, currently. I don't know wait, how far. There's five of them. Six of them. Okay, so best in the Mistborn world so Sectet? far. Sectet? Um, I also actually... I think I like um, all the Stormlight Archive books better than Elantris. Okay. And I think I would put Elantris on par with Warbreaker. Very, very good books. Don't get me wrong. Put them on par with Warbreaker. I would put them above his YA uh, stuff. Yeah. Um, Still Hard, the Reckoner series, the Cytonic series, Skyfall, those ones. Um, so it's good, but, but I, I just can't feel it as a top three. Okay. And I agree, but I maybe I guess I just need to read more of his books. But as of right now, where I've read everything which if you want to see, there's a video of my Brandon Sanderson journey. I'll put it like right there. Or over there. Somewhere. Don't know. Um, yeah, it's right now. It's right now, it's number four. Yep. Um, should we get into what the book's about? Sure. So here's the pitch for, for Elantris. Okay. Oh, here's <laughs> the pitch. You got it. Um, uh, uh, zombie prince falls in love with a princess. No, yeah, it's the same fine. Yeah, that actually is great. So there's three different POVs in this book. The first one is a prince who wakes up dead. Yep. That happens, like, in the first page. Basically, he wakes up in a zombie and is thrown into a magical city full of zombies. But it's not a magical city. It used to be a magical city. Yeah, now it's just a zombie place because the magic's gone. Yeah, okay. The second point of view is Serene, which, okay, hold on. We listened to this one. And we also listened to Hope of Elantris. Different narrators, they pronounce them totally different. So it's interesting. Uh, the first narrator pronounced it Serene, which is interesting. I always pronounce it Serene. And it, I would, if I were reading it on my own, I would have said Serene. Yep. Which is what the the announce the Hope audio book uh, reader for Hope of Launches read it as. Is, Serene. Is Serene. But like Raiden was Rowden, and I don't think I agree with that one. I yep. like Raiden better. Same with like. I don't know. They the, said a couple things different. Yeah. Erlon was not Erlon. Yeah, the Rio was a little different. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, they're, you're, you're pronouncing things here, right. so it's, it's a little hard. Right. Really, basically, I need Brandon Sanderson to tell me himself. Yeah, where are you, Brandon Sanderson? He's about an hour south of us right now. Mm. Is, is where he's at. But... Two hours south of us. Anyways. Um, anyway, so that Serene is the second point of view. And she is betrothed to Prince Raiden. And she just barely got to the city to meet him for the first time. Like, the day he died, right? Yes. How sad. And then the third point of view is Horathen, who is a priest who has come to 
convert the whole city before it's destroyed. Yep. So Horathian basically is given the uh, directive that, hey, if the city is not converted within the next three months, we're showing up with armies to destroy it. Uh, so he's trying to work his, his best to uh, somehow convert the entire city. Pretty much. Um, yeah. Okay. I didn't love Horathian's story, though. It took me a minute to care. <laughs> to get into it, to... I don't know. I just wanted to get back to Raiden or Shalon. Whoops! To be honest... Not Shalon. <laughs> Serini. To be honest, I think it took you a little while to get into the book overall. Yeah. Right? Like, it, uh, you, you really struggled with this in a way that I didn't expect you to struggle with. It's true. Um, but it, it definitely ended... As soon as the romance picked up a little harder, you uh, you got a little more engaged. I'm just going to point that out. Well, does that surprise you? That's just a thing I've learned about myself. If yeah. there's no romance... Takes me a second to now, care. The interesting thing is, Launches is not a long book. Um, it's Five, not, 530. And I would say it's not an overly complex book, but you felt like it was fairly complex. I just have never had so much. That's no, not true. Uh, Way of Kings took me a second to like understand. I was just like, what is going on? But like Brandon Sanderson, I can usually follow pretty okay. And this one just felt a little not as easy to pick up on and stay on board with. Which is interesting because I feel like there's far less named characters in this than a lot of the other ones. Maybe. Um, and and yes, you you get some more. It felt like where you really got lost was it with Serene's uh, or Serene's uh, plot line when she's dealing with all the various politicians and there were extra names in there. There's that a were lot of names in. right there. Yes. Um, I feel like it was only like five names though that are really talked about. But I feel like that's really what lost you was yeah. that extra little bit. No, because what lost me really was Harithan. I just never cared about Harithan's story. Ah. So that's really what lost me. And then there was a couple other little things. Gotcha. Yeah. But it definitely regained you. It did. You just said it was I mean, I gave it five stars. Fantasy. It's a five star book. So here's the question. Okay. Is this the best book you've read this fall? You have to come back to me on that one. Okay. Would you recommend this book to random people? No. This isn't a book that I would just give to someone like, hey, read this. I think it's a, not a beginner fantasy book. But if someone loves fantasy and has read a decent amount of fantasy, even a little bit of fantasy, yes. Okay. But not just anyone could pick up and read this book. It's interesting because I think Alonchus is one of the easier and more approachable Brandon Sanderson's books. Um, again, I just think it has far less named characters to keep track of. And less. there's only a single city that you're you're dealing with, so you have less necessary interactions. There's like three cities. Okay, you have... Your Aralon and Teod and Elantris. Teod? Yes. Yes, kind of. Teod is where the one king is that you talk via telephone, basically. Yeah. Um, so Those telephones. Not much okay, these little balls. What are they called? Sions? Yep. Those are cool. I'm pretty sure they're just echo shows. Um, they just float. <laughs> they're like the next edition of them. And you can like see people's faces. Wait, do you see people's faces? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So they, they see them and they talk to them. Yeah. So it really just it just feels very much like they're FaceTiming each other um, through these, these types of things. And it's like... Hey Alexa, tell me what this guy's up to. <laughs> and it goes and spies on him and comes back. <laughs> yeah, it's basically um, a spren. Yeah, you know what? It's very close to a spren. And or mbot. And or and or mbot. Uh, ben Sanderson just really likes these uh, <laughs> these sidekicks that are. Uh, I want to call them NPCs, non-player characters, <laughs> but that's that's not quite what I mean. Um, but you, you kind of get it. They're non-humanoid things. Yeah. Um, that that play important roles. Um, and, and Sanderson seems to love those. I love them. I want one of each of them. That's fair. Would they kind of all be redundant if I had one of each of them, though? I don't know. Maybe. They'd probably fight each other. But it'd be cool. Which one would you want most? A Spren, an Embot, or a Sion? Probably a Spren. Yeah, me too, because Sprens can make you into a Radiant. Right, yeah, that's why yeah, I want So Sions and Embots seem pretty not as cool, if you ask me, compared to that. Um, but yes, good. Okay, so back to Elantris. Yeah, sorry. Phenomenal book. Highly recommended. Um, you can grab it based on whatever you want. This actually was the first published Brandon Sanderson novel. Cute. So he had multiple uh, novels out, uh, I guess, being shopped around. And he didn't expect Elantris to be the one that was picked up, but it was picked up first. And he shares, actually, I think at the end of this book, or maybe in Arcanum Abounded, that it only sold about 400 copies the first week. And he thought it was a, a horrible failure. Um, but it has continued to sell 400 copies a week for the past 10 years. Oh, my gosh. Um, so it just is consistently selling, and more and more people get it. So great book. Highly recommend picking it up. Um, if you're a Sanderson fan, I assume you've probably already read it. If you haven't, definitely worth the jump into it. One last thing that I'll add here. 
Also on the Elantris world is another series or another book uh, novella in the same world called The Emperor's Soul, which is a really interesting companion I story to this. I really enjoyed The Emperor's um, Soul. It was really, really good. Apparently, we will be getting an Elantris 2 and 3 sometime after the finish of the final Stormlight. Uh, or Excuse me, the final of the first Stormlight uh, yeah. grouping. Um, I will say, of all of Brandon Sanderson's romances, this one's my favorite. Really? This one over everything else? I don't know. I don't know. It was just a good romance. It was a cute, like, you're, yeah, I liked it a lot. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, it, it wasn't bad. I'm not, not debating that. I just didn't, I'm wondering how, I wonder how that will evolve as you True. get into a I few more to, of the brand sense romances. I need romances. to get a little bit more into a couple more yeah. series. All right. Well, yeah. thanks for stopping by. I'm Blake. I'm Jamie. And we're Blamey. Guess so. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you later. See ya.